Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Trails in the Sky, second chapter. This is me, your host, Logic Blade, and we're back at it again after uh, taking a small break for a day. But we, we're back on pace, and we're ready to go ahead and start chapter four. Last time in chapter three, we were invited to a mad tea party by a mysterious mysterious person who had been pulling the strings of the intelligence division the whole time while they were out trying to steal a tank the real enforcer of Ouroboros got to work in infiltrating our ranks and turns out it was an 11 year old girl yeah Ren kind of you know surprised us all that she was in fact the angel of slaughter and even though we didn't get to fight her or her big giant robot, the point was made. She had us under her thumb the whole time. And, well, despite how depressing that is, we need to move on because it's clear Ouroboros has operations all across the country. So our next stop, the city of Bose. Well, that's a lie. I'm lying to you. As we can see, there's one quest we need to take care of on the Royal Avenue. So, we'll need to settle that before uh, making our grand escape. As always, go ahead and check out the Orbital Factory. See if you can upgrade a few of your slots while you can. Stella and Agate are good at the moment, of course. Uh, Shara recently joined our party, so she'll need some TLC for her slots, as well as Olivier, because I do intend to use him for this chapter, so. Alright. You see, those EP numbers have gone way up, as uh, Shara's got, like, only half of her EP now. Here I was thinking I could use the stick to control the camera again. No, it's not that simple. All right. Where are you, monster? One second here. Do, do, do. Doesn't say exactly where it is, but I figure if I run around enough, I'll find it. Oh, it's not here. I don't imagine it's on the scenic route proper, because the quest didn't say it was on the scenic route at all. It said it was on the Royal Avenue, which is the main drag. Eh, regardless. Regardless, I'll give it a little sweep.
Oh, can't even hit all of them. What a shame. Okay, now that we've gotten nice and softened up. We're gonna go finish the job. Not much, Pats fan. Literally just started today. Happy Friday the 13th. If you're a big Halloween fan, or anything of that nature. <laughs> Yeah, no, I just woke up, so... Figured, hey, it's time to play some more trails. <laughs> uh, just about to start Chapter 4. We just gotta take care of this one side quest here in Gransel before we can leave. Because, you know, Trails second chapter loves giving you random side quests at the end of chapters that you have to deal with. Let's see if I can calm it, both of them. I can. There we go. Monster issue solved. And we're still getting lots and lots of experience for our efforts. <laughs> well, obviously not. I mean, Suna and Reen don't use protection. <laughs> Speaking of which, I had some ideas about writing that story before I went to bed, so... I'm thinking maybe I'll have a part 3 for that sometime soon. I don't know if I'll stream me writing part 3, because, well... If I'm going to be streaming, I'll have to change all my settings again, which is annoying, so... That's about the only reason I would, uh, not put it up on there. Anyway. We're up to 150 BP, which is the maximum you can have at this point. So, that pretty much covers everything we need to do around here. The only other thing I would say to do before stopping by the landing port is bugging your good buddy Anton, who is somewhere. I was thinking of having part three happening immediately after part two, because uh, I want to deal with, like, Muse freaking out and uh, working from there. I, I had some ideas. <laughs> And then part four is going to be, like, a month or two later, just before they go to Heimdall. And it's going to be about Reen dealing with his, uh... Reen dealing with the fact that he got an underage girl pregnant. <laughs> it's finally time. Yeah. <laughs> anyway... We've also picked up a copy of the Liberal News, so let's uh, check out the new issue before heading out. So, it looks like the Ron mayoral election's over, and they chose to go with Norman to boost their tourism rather than uh, Portos, who is big on the harbor. <laughs> but it seems like, you know, they're willing to work together which is a good sign for any political system, when your opposition's willing to work with your main party on some issues. But, you know. Hey, I found a typo. It wasn't a singing ceremony, it was a signing ceremony. So it looks like the uh, non-aggression pack signing went out without a hitch. And there's a little bit of a crossbell in here. Uh, we heard Queen Alicia mention that earlier, but, you know, Crossbell is pretty much under siege by Erebonia and Calvard at all times. So, hopefully this non-aggression pact is like, hey, guys, play nice, don't, don't screw over your buffer state. 
And somebody threat sent a threatening letter to the Liberal News. Which we already knew about. Okay. With all that under wraps, it's time to leave Grantsel. So yeah, you can see Ricky and Anton are just here at the landing port. And he's resolved to go on a journey. So, good for him. <laughs> a buffer state? No, this is just stopping that's preventing me from taking over all of Western Zamoria. <laughs> Once again, we get stopped just before getting on the airship. Come on, guys, you gotta get your timing better. <laughs> Better since Dorothy's here. She just came in from Bose. So, wonder what the our reporter friends have to talk to us about, and why Olivier is trying to listen in. <laughs> Pay me no mind. <laughs> Thank you, Shara. <laughs> There are so many women in Zamoria. Clearly I need to take over everything to get my son the ample opportunity he needs. I will have grandchildren, Rufus. Finally to wake to it, huh? <laughs> so, shit, Dorothy was literally there when those guys took their ship back. <laughs> to tell you what happened, you might say that. Hell with it, it's a thousand words or a picture. Dorothy handed over. <laughs> Don't go crazy about this, okay? Oh, did I just insult myself? Um... Why so serious, Grandmaster Dorothy? Well, well, well. If that isn't Joshua roaming around with the Sky Bandits. And since, uh, we've done such a good job allying with, uh, our local news force, they're not going to run that photo in the paper. Anyway, that's the real end of chapter 3. So, make your save. And, uh, let's get started with chapter 4. So, we're, uh, shifting perspectives. Going from Team Estelle to... Team Joshua last night. And of course, uh, Mueller gone to Bose as well. <laughs> and 
And, you know, they're talking about some of the differences between Liberal and Erebonia. <laughs> How uh, Erebonia's warfare is more focused on tanks and cavalry and such. They don't really have the airship squadron that Liberal does. <laughs> yeah, just about time for the Joshua Mueller duel. <laughs> I just started on this part, so... Waiting for it to happen. It's not technically a duel. You technically have Josette for support. Not that it counts for much, but, you know, hey, the thought counts. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Everyone forgets about Josette in this game. Card games in the pearl. The only card game uh, country is Erebonia. And Liberal isn't part of Erebonia just yet. <laughs> Sorry guys, you made the mistake of bringing Dorothy to a military facility. What did you expect? <laughs> yep, clearly his hobby is just playing card games. It's a wonder he hasn't challenged Reen to Blade or something. <laughs> You're really tall, too. What squad are you a member of? <laughs> I gotta say, military types of you? Totally not my type. Damn, do you look good in that uniform. Man, I'm tired. Isn't it time to change watch yet? What the hell think a level 2 alert would be this boring, eh? Wish that girl would come back this way at least. What, that chick with the glasses? You got weird tastes, man. Hey, she's, a uh, unique, sure. Did you see her? She's got that cute nerd thing going on. And I'm just saying, I wouldn't mind getting to know her, you know? <laughs> well, go indulge your camera fetish once you're on break. Still... What the hell are those intel leftovers even thinking? Hiding out in the Ravnu mine like a bunch of monsters? What the hell, man? Who knows what those guys... The mind of crazy elites like them? Ain't like yours or mine, my friend. Good work, you two. Ah, Captain, sir. Captain, all clear, sir. Right, good. Listen up. Remnants of the Intelligence Division showed up in Gransel. All members, including former Captain Adel Thea, are in a custody. For serious, sir? We're standing down from alert, then, sir. About that. What they're calling a giant flying orbital puppet showed up in the capital. We're currently searching for its whereabouts. A flying puppet? Like a doll? You sure HQ isn't, um, pulling your legs, sir? Hell if I know, Private. Regardless, we're to maintain alert status until dawn. Sorry, gentlemen, but I need you to remain at your posts. Ugh. Yes, sir. Understood, sir. You gotta be kidding me. A giant flying puppet. What, someone launch a huge toy out of a cannon or something? Ah, uh, who knows. You heard the captain, though. Intel guys are done dusted. We aren't gonna get attacked out here. All we gotta do is stand around until we get relieved. Yeah. Huh? What's up? I thought I heard. Ah! Hey, what's wrong? Ah! Surprise, bitch. 
It's me, Joshua. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, I really love Falcom's world building. <laughs> That's what makes it so much fun. Knocking out inattentive guards like this is trivial. Damn straight. Come on, take the compliment, you jerk. Anyway, let's go get the Sky Bandits airship back. <laughs> We're just gonna have to mug the guard captain to steal his card key. Let's avoid killing anyone if we can. Not like these two guards I just choked out. They'll be fine. <laughs> The Capua family will never resort to murder on my watch. Unless I'm brainwashed. Then we might. <laughs> Alright. Infiltration time. So, you're playing with Joshua. You are running solo, but you do technically have uh, the Sky Bandits' backup. Anyway, you're level 72. But, uh, like in base game, you're way stronger than Estelle and, uh, and stuff, but without all the equipment and stuff, not so much. Let's own some noobs. Yeah, Joshua is uh, super fast and uh, hella strong, so most of these fights are pretty trivial. I say most, but... Uh... <laughs> There's one that isn't. So basically, use these fights against scrubs to build up your uh, CP. Don't worry too much if your uh, Sky Bandits get hurt and stuff. They can take a few hits. As can you, of course. I think throwing a bomb while blinded is a good idea, Kyle. <laughs> anyway. As you can see, they offer, like, no experience whatsoever. You don't carry any over, over any items except with any of that sort. But we got the ignition key. <laughs> I mean that you're crazy, superhuman, strong, and fast. You aren't even the same person we were when we fought back then. <laughs> yeah, my switch hadn't been flipped yet. Yeah, you might be able to fight Lawrence. Nah, you'll kick your ass. <laughs> That's a uh, kind of heavy. Doesn't cover half of it, really. Anyway, yeah. Basically, the reason Joshua isn't going on a one-man tearing of Ouroboros is uh. Literally stronger than us. Anyway, we got the attack three ports, which is uh, a 
immediately great. <laughs> the Blade Lord versus the Edge Lord. Yep, that sounds about right. Almost time for a guard change. Give me one of your bombs. Huh, <laughs> ah, what the? Infiltration successful. <laughs> the recipe's a trade secret, though. Because, you know, Ouroboros just has super powerful sleeping bombs. Because why not? Anyway, loot the chests here. Pick up some accessories. You know, standard fare. Anyway, check every room you can as you go through. Got a four-way path here. Nothing in that guy. Yeah, you just want to loot all the items just because you want to get all the chests, trophy, all that sort of thing. It's pretty much a straight shot through here. And you can't really grind to level up. <laughs> hey man, Joshua knows his limits. His skills are for, you know, covert warfare and such. The second he loses the initiative, he loses the fight. Or at least that's what he believes. I think he he stands more of a chance than he gives himself credit for. But he would still lose. Like, there's no doubt about that part. Like, we haven't fought uh, Luve seriously at this point. But the uh, couple of fights we've had in the first chapter were some of the hardest in that game. So, that gives you an idea of... How strong he is when he's just holding back. That's that guy. Let's move out. Anyway. Since we learned Dorothy are enjoying dinner here, we're just gonna leave him be. <laughs> and mentioning that the uh, Imperial military's food is uh, notoriously bad. <laughs> Corned beef, the taste of nothing but salt. Beans so overcooked they have no texture. And bread that's more than a bit stale. <laughs> Ooh. Is that why you attack people so often? Because your food is yucky? That's... <laughs> That's pretty cruel. And the real problems of having a militarily focused uh, country is that, you know, the soldiers eat like pigs. <laughs> so yeah, let's just let's just sneak past these guys. No sense in knocking them out. There's nothing back there. I thought there would be more stuff there. There's not. 
a not a whole lot to pick up in this area. It's only like 10 or 11 chests or so. Most of them just basic recovery items. Dorothy doesn't realize that she's one of Osborne's targets, too. <laughs> then again, no woman on Zamuri is safe from Osborne's ambitions. <laughs> Alright, and I believe that EP charge is the last treasure chest in the area. So, you just want to make a save here check that your equipment's all optimized. Orbits are, uh... Orbits are acceptable. Alright, then. Johnny Young Bosch did his voice. Yeah, back when you could get Johnny Young Bosch to just do random things without, you know, being on Netflix or anything. Anyway, we made it to the Bobcat, and it looks like we're ready to just take it out the front door. As soon as you click the Bobcat, Royal Army shows up. So, let's take out these goons. to blind Joshua, so I guess I'm sticking to arts for my problems. They're all single target, because of course they are. Yeah, Johnny Young Bosch did all of those rolls. guys, it's a sneaking mission. We're being extra sneaky here. Ooh. What a rude boy. Making me use my CP like that? Come on. Also giving Kyle the business, which is not very nice of him. Get that bobcat ready to go. Hmm. 
No buts. I'm gonna back you up because you're gonna need it. Even though I don't really do very much in this next fight. <laughs> Well, I do think I'm a fairly good judge of character. <laughs> uh, if they can afford them, they'll bring them back. Maybe. Otherwise, I don't know who they get. Alright then. And Cap with Sky Bandits. What perfect timing you have. And he's with you, no less. You remembered me. What the? Oh crap, what's an Erebonian army guy doing here? And wait a second, you know him? We've met. Briefly. You're here to collect the ship prior to the pack signing, I suspect. Exactly. To be perfectly frank, I could not care less if you take that ship and fly it to the moon. Now that I'm here, however, I cannot simply let you pass. Allow me to introduce myself properly. I'm Major Mueller Vander of the Imperial Army 7th Armored Division. Oh man. Be careful, this won't be a normal fight. I'd say that's due more to you, Joshua. Regardless. On your guard! Lame. Nice aim. Anyway, Mueller's fast, despite his looks. So you want to take over the turn order, use Clock Up EX on yourself, and uh, control the flow of battle that way. And you see, Josette basically just plinks at him, and loses half her health in one attack. So she is not going to be much of a threat in this fight. Just as well. Clock down your opponent. And do your best to keep up this, uh, keep this up. Because Mueller will kick your ass. that. We're already in kind of bad situation here. And I don't exactly have great buffs here, so, you know. You do what you can. Elgate doesn't even do significantly more damage. Though interesting enough, Flare Arrow, Arrow seems to do more damage than uh, Hellgate did. And make sure to get the uh, speed up before you get your butt whoops. And once again, clock him down.
<laughs> Not the most exciting of fights, but uh, at the very least you can uh, you can win this one. You just gotta be patient. God damn it, Joshua. That needed to be a hit. Alright. I think I got him low enough for uh, Black Fang to finish him off. Or True Sever, rather. There we go. And there you go. That's how you beat Mueller. If you don't control the turn order like that, you're gonna die. There's no two ways about that. And you even get a level, for all it's worth. It's not worth very much. <laughs> Go down already, you sack of... Master level swordplay. And your last name is Vander. I think I can guess who Olivier must be in that case. We're discussing identities. Yours was certainly a surprise. Joshua Stray, lost child of Hamill. What? Huh? As we thought. I guess even that idiot's guesses can be right sometimes. Uh, um, Joshua? May I ask then, Major Vander? How do you know about that? So you do have a killer's gleam in your eye after all. I'll give you all I have then, Enforcer. Oh, wait, no! Come on, guys, we've achieved our objective. Let's retreat. Oi, Josette, Joshua, hop on. I'm talking like this now. <laughs> no, that definitely wouldn't be Kyle's voice. <laughs> Accent out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, and of course, Dorothy got a million picks at Joshua, like a boss. <laughs> Well, good job, Liberal's army. You just, you know, let that bobcat escape. I think I've seen that boy somewhere before. <laughs> I wonder which of us really escaped here. I'm greener than I thought, I suppose. Even so, Hamill, hmm? Seems I've no choice but to help him after all. And with that little vignette out of the way, we're back with Estelle. And she knows pretty much the entirety of what happened through this one photograph, I guess. <laughs> Trying to look cool, huh? I hope you're taking care of yourself, because that scarf definitely does make you look cool. From what I understand, literally everyone. <laughs> That's who I'm going to use for third chapter. Why do you look like you're getting along so well with that stupid tomboy? <laughs> oh, Estelle. She has her priorities straight. <laughs> eh, I'm not 100% sure who I'll use for third chapter. I'll, I'll figure something out, I'm sure. <laughs> Probably just gonna use Onion Graham. Do it solo. No. 
No, I'm not. I'm not subjecting myself to that sort of hell. <laughs> <laughs> Damn straight she is. But I mean, she confessed her love and got her first kiss out of it. So I mean, they're pretty much, you know, engaged in JRPG land. <laughs> Remember to rely on your friends, because your friends will get you through the day, Estelle. <laughs> Yeah, so before we stop in Bose, we're gonna make a stop over in Roland. Of course, before all that, we've got free reign the ship, so. Let's go ahead and bug people. If you wanna get the uh, Anton achievement, make sure to talk to him here. He's gonna travel all over the Burl. He's gonna find a cute lady friend, maybe. <laughs> this happens a lot, so I'm gonna tag along. <laughs> Ricky's just like, Man, I don't know what's going on, but I'm enjoying the ride. <laughs> Looks like these tourists want a picture of, of the Hawking Gate. I mean, why not? It is, it is a big old military installation. And real peace with the Empire is almost upon us. For a brief moment, I suppose. <laughs> and it seems like, uh... It seems like Renan's mom found a cute girl. <laughs> I can't find any cute girls for my son to fall in love with, but, uh, I did find this cute girl. <laughs> Delicious food, clean mountain air, the perfect place to refine one's beauty. I don't know, have you been on a farm? <laughs> Not gonna refine your beauty there, despite your uh, best efforts. You are gonna end up smelling like shit, though. <laughs> anyway, let's bug Chloe. She's up in the cabin here. What happened to Joshua? I can read your mind, Estelle. That's how I know. Did you just bait me, princess? Well, I am the possible heiress to a nation. Baiting people's what I do best. <laughs> Chloe, you aren't a princess, you're a frickin' mind reader. Foo 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 foo. <laughs> and on a note that's absolutely in no way related at all. Hmm? Like, yeah, totally has nothing to do with anything. Uh, totally hypothetical, but, um... You say if, uh... While I'm here worrying out my butt over him, he's with another girl. <laughs> How old? About the same age as us. Hmm. To answer this hypothetical question, I would find myself uninterested in any excuses Joshua would have to make. I know, right? <laughs> it's, it's... I think Muse has trolling on lockdown. Chloe's just like, you know, she picks her moments and goes for them. <laughs> the 
Yeah, my current plan is to have Olivier sing at him for an hour, and then we'll hear everything. <laughs> uh... Wait, she's off to return to her seat. <laughs> it's okay, man. Cross-dressing's accepted in this day and age. <laughs> in any case, Tita's down in the, uh... In the engineering area here. Damn straight, Tita! You certainly aren't reliable. <laughs> right, yeah, Muse's trolling is consistent. Chloe just, like... She's like, oh, I'm just, you know, a kind princess, you know, but sometimes she's just absolutely savage and just, like, goes for it, and it's great. Dang it, Tita. You're 12. Don't be, don't be like that. You bet there is. Let me cuddle you at any time. <laughs> well, some parts of Muse aren't trolling. I mean... <laughs> she, she does want the, uh... She does want to be part of the Reen Sandwich. <laughs> Excellent! Your smile is the best, you know. Now you're all so cute and huggable and you're all sniffly and sad, but... <laughs> But yeah, I'm I do really like this airship run around because you uh get to see just how close Estelle is with her other party members. And uh here we have Olivier being super secret. <laughs> and of course Olivier is already being informed about everything that's been going on, thanks to his uh connection to Mueller here. <laughs> As always, you have my special thanks. Ah, Joshua, to think you'd be a match for Mueller. I suppose I should have expected nothing less from one of Ouroboros' chosen. Still, that's one guess I dearly wish hadn't been true. Yeah, maybe don't muse to yourself out loud, Olivier. <laughs> you and, uh, this person you doesn't exist. <laughs> I can only pray, but come on. <laughs> I was the leading man, after all. <laughs> you know, educated guesses. <laughs> Do you think I have cottage cheese for a brain or something? Think you've become such a bloodhound for the truth. You've grown, Estelle. So talk already, Mr. Erebonian suspicious person.
<laughs> yep, now her brain is, uh, cottage cheese. It's actually just, you know, a delicious dairy product. <laughs> You're important, Olivier. You're an important part of this team. Jeez, that kind of ca kind of sappy. What I'm saying is, uh, hey, what's with the drippy dinner plate eyes? Oh, it's nothing. <laughs> you touch my heart, my fair Estelle. You need not fear. I shall not betray your trust, nor do I find your trust and love a burden. I give myself gladly to your cause. I bet he was honestly surprised to hear that from her. Because he's like, wait, how can you possibly trust me? <laughs> what if he's a dangerous psycho? That'd be so cool, but also kind of freaky. <laughs> yeah, kind of kind of super freaky. Super freak, say super freaky. Do do. Helmsman is still singing to himself as he goes. Well, that's everyone on the bottom floors. Let's uh, let's bug everyone at the top here. Now yeah, we're pretty much in Roland at this point. Chloe and Tita are in their seats. <laughs> Apparently Minka Fitzpatrick doesn't like his role, so... I mean, fair. Miami's tanking anyway. Zinn's kind of, uh, upset that he was knocked out by a simple sleeping agent trick. <laughs> it's the NFL. Anything can happen. Oop, I already talked to this guy. <laughs> I didn't realize they were playing on in uh, Washington, because uh, Washington's uh, stadium is on an Indian burial ground, which explains why all their quarterbacks are cursed to break their legs in disgusting and horrifying fashions. And talk to our last party member here. Why do you treat me like a hyperactive palm? <laughs> Nothing would be the best answer, but we're definitely not that lucky. <laughs> Anything can happen. Antonio Brown's actually a Miami sleeper agent. It was all part of the plan. Every time Tom Brady throws his way, Brown's going to tip the ball up in the air and it's going to get picked off. Alright, so once you've talked to all your party members... I 
think that triggers this. Oh, did I? Never mind. The actual trigger for this is uh, going up here and then going back to your seat. Thank you for flying with us today. Passengers departing in Roland, please check to ensure you haven't left the- ah! Huh? Oh my. What in the name of Gehenna? How could we have entered a cloud at this altitude? We didn't enter a cloud, sir. We're descending. This doesn't seem like a cloud, though. It's more like... Captain. Transmission from Roland's air traffic control. The city and surrounding area have been engulfed in a deep fog. What? <laughs> so yeah, we're not going to Bose. We're, uh, stopping in Roland because it's covered in fog. This is definitely not usual when landing an airship. <laughs> Congrats on Sam Darnold for finally kissing a girl. I wonder if he liked it. <laughs> well. Looks like we aren't gonna get to go to Bo's, because I'm not even sure how we were able to land in a fog like this. Definitely not going to be able to take off in a fog like that. So, we're going to spend this entire chapter with this annoying mist filter on. And of course, when weird things happen, it's probably the society behind it. Welcome to Chapter 4, The Mist Demon's Target. A paranoid little part of me can't help wonder if this is intentional. <laughs> and this is our first time meeting Ina. Well, for half the party anyway. What are you doing over there, Olivier? Don't don't mind me. I was certainly not flashing back to memories of the destruction of my liquor. Oh, just, just for the record. What? <laughs> oh, jeez. Apparently, it's just started and kept getting worse over time. <laughs> Did they get a pension plan? Do enforcers off the job get employment insurance? <laughs> I wonder who bankrolls in the enforcers. How, where do they get their income? Because, I mean, they probably have to make their money somehow.
Yeah. And everyone's basically like, okay, Estelle, but you need to get your head in the game. There's something weird going on here right now. We need to take care of this first. <laughs> they probably just win the lottery every, uh, every time. Ouroboros count number one. <laughs> oh, jeez. And then the Papers, Please music just plays over it when he shows up. He pulls out an abacus instead of a calculator because he's just that skilled with math. So I guess we're just going to be on standby until something worse happens. <laughs> so the fog's covering the entire city, and Ina wants to know how far it's spreading. So that's our story mission. We've got the Malga Trail to the north, Millage Main Road to the west, and the Elise Highway to the south. <laughs> and uh, Estelle and Shara are the mandatory party members, which means we don't have to carry Agate around with us anymore. Um. I said I'd be bringing Olivier, so I'm bringing Olivier. And... Stop. Damn it. Stop. Okay. That's what we're going with. That's what uh, Random Chance has decreed. Well, I mean, I guess, uh, one of them is a famous opera singer, so that probably makes a fair bit of money. <laughs> Feel like you're losing direction? Use your map and the compass in the top right corner of your screen. <laughs> we also should check out our home, just in case. That's true. But I mean, she also has a radio gig on the side. <laughs> Aubin time pays the big bucks. Because <laughs> everybody just, you know, throws their money into radio in Aragonia. I bet Monk, like, single-handedly funds Ouroboros' operations with his, uh, donations to the radio shows. <laughs> Guys, what if Monk is an Anguis? It all makes sense now. <laughs> anyway, there's a new issue of the Liberal News, so we'll go ahead and pick that up. See what it has to say. Oh, it's about the uh, intelligence division's capture, thanks to us. And uh, the appearance of the Potter Modder is just a giant shadow, <laughs> according to the news here. Capua Sky Bandits steal their own airship. <laughs> so, yeah.
<laughs> Dorothy is the Grandmaster. Wouldn't put it past him. Yep, turns out the most evil thing of all is, uh... Is the mass media. Not countries, but the mass media. Anyway, we got four quests to do here. A couple monster quests. A, uh, fish for... Find all the fishing spots. And, uh, find out where these people's ring have gone. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Stop by Aben Bar. And just uh, peruse their their wares. Get their get the recipes if you haven't already. And uh, check out the house over here. There. The house app beside this one. <laughs> Sorry, Osborne. You can't run a railway through the press. <laughs> and talk to Sarah here. She'll give you the next copy of Gambler Jack. Which I will be reading off screen because that's just how it's gonna go. <laughs> I'll put it up in like a special uh, edition once I get all the chapters of it. And it's uh, one of my favorite NPCs, the uh, rambunctious Claire. <laughs> my killer reporting instincts are telling me that's misinformation, isn't it? He's really fighting some evil organization all on his own, and you're trying to find him, right? <laughs> yeah, that's how this story should go. After all, a normal story just wouldn't fit Joshua. Joshua secretly infiltrating evil organization's base all on his own. Oh, he's so cool. I wasn't waiting for you or anything, b b baka <laughs> We need to have a duel, right now! It'd be a climactic duel in the fog, isn't that just the coolest? Looks like Ridge is still here, at least. <laughs> Alright. So, let's stop by the church and, uh... Start on this quest, at least. Uh, these two lovers who met in the very prologue of the first chapter of the first game are uh, now going to get hitched back in Roland here. Unfortunately, they've uh, lost their rings, and they are so lovey-dovey that they didn't even notice walk in. <laughs> uh... Why is your heart so beautiful, even though I am the cause of your suffering? <laughs> oh my god. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can deal with this stuff to some extent, but this is just sappy for the sake of being sappy. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, we can investigate immediately. Not like we're on a strict time limit or anything. We could literally put off every single side quest in this chapter until the uh, very end of it. Guys, focus. So yeah, let's go find their engagement ring. It was stolen by a bird. The C crow He's not even in this game! Why did he steal your engagement ring? <laughs> Yep, one of those dastardly things flew off with our ring in his mouth. He said he was going to give it to some black-haired boy. I don't know why. And we know that its nest is somewhere north of Roland. Yep, this one's gonna take time, patience. It's not like it's on the very top of the uh, Asmellus Tower or anything. <laughs> Alright, with uh, that sappiness out of the way, we don't need to run all the way to Garoon Gate to start the uh, fishing quest. We just need to fish at all the, uh, all the spots, I think. <laughs> but uh, I don't trust this guy because I don't believe that for a second, so we're going to run over to the Garoon Gate once I... Uh... You know what? I'm just going to run over to the Garoon Gate. Anyway, the fog doesn't seem to extend too far at the south here. About 60 cells from the city, and there's uh, no monsters in that fog, so that's good. <laughs> but in any case, now that we know that... Go ahead and loot this place. Oh, right. I don't have Vag in my party. Which means... That I don't have Cloak Quartz in my party right now. I should probably fix that for, uh... For the future here. Self-destruct is nasty, though. Yeah, I'll just be careful to avoid monsters as I go. Make sure to hit the fishing spot, though. I don't know what exactly they want you to catch. But I think you have to catch something in each spot. Finally, fishing worked out for me. I got a trout. Okay, that's not my uh, encounter monster. That's just a random rhino cider. Oh, god damn it, Tita. Take 
level up. Anyway, this is the monster we need to get rid of. the annoying explodey boys. levels except for Stell now. And the HP 4 quarts. Because, you know, why not, right? Anyway, let's go talk to this guy at the Garoon Gate here. And all the people at, uh, at the gate here, because why not? That we're looking for should be in one of the guest rooms. There he is. So yeah, let's find the fishing spots. There's six of them, and some of them are annoying to find. One of them you can't get until the very end of the chapter, and it's also missable, so gotta be careful about that. It's kind of an annoying quest. Find a fishing spot, find a fish, and you're good. <laughs> so, just so I'm not going completely crazy... Yeah, you don't need to... It'll count anything you find before you start this quest, which is why I've got that one there. <laughs> but yeah, we gotta catch them all. Be a champion is my test, to train them is my cause. Pokemon, gotta catch them all. Alright. Luckily, I can, uh, turbo away from most monsters here. Into the fog. And while we're here, let's check in on the, uh, Bright Household. Apparently, Olivia and Tita approve of our house. <laughs> oh, we left the attic open. 
Better fix that. Each that's a part of it, sure. That's another typo. <laughs> Unfortunately, I clicked through that too fast so you could barely see it. <laughs> How about that, give or take a few gray hairs? Sure, your hair is nothing but gray. And Estelle has no qualms about, you know, circus folk at all. <laughs> Gee, just how cute she is. She even kidnapped Shara. Estelle's power was unstoppable back when she was a kid. <laughs> a lot happened. Spreading goodwill and flowers as a bracer does, yes. So anyway, this is Sherazard's big backstory chapter. So we get quite a bit of focus on her. And, you know, just a nice little scene. If I remember correctly... Yeah, you can, uh, sleep in your bed. Just gonna do so because we got exploded by a couple of jerks. And they aren't very nice. And before you go, there is a fishing spot here, so... Go ahead and try to catch yourself a fish. That's our second one. Four to go. And yeah, you'll see it. It gives you the notice that once you find a spot, it'll record in your notebook automatically. As one would expect. And once you head back to Roland here, you get a little scene. From uh, Ridge and all the people he's escorting. And since we cleared that monster out of the Garoon Gate, uh, Ridge won't have to deal with it by himself. Understood, Mr. Bracer. town we need to we need to steal agate for a second here Leave it to me <laughs> well, I say steal agate but really just uh, steal his quartz I don't know why it really matters what I give him So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna pop the cloak quartz on Tita here. And there we go. All right.
that's one issue solved. <laughs> yeah, can't even enjoy the tourism with the fog like this. Let's go to the Bracer Guild House. I put all my hopes, my dreams, my money into this bow's trip. Even nature itself conspires against my quest. Nature! <laughs> oh, Anton. Jeez, I am I am feeling gassy and sassy today. All right, let's take the Malga Trail up here. Do, do, do. Just a couple of chests in the area. All right. Anyway, the mine is to the right. The tower's to the left. We're gonna be making a stop over at the tower anyway, so... Might as well check there first. Keep your eyes out for the treasure, because... Obviously not having a detect quartz makes it a lot more challenging to find them all. Sorry, just one second here. Alright. Yeah, I remember this one wasn't uh, too... Uh, too hard to find stuff in. With the Sepeth, a... few nice Emerald Talismans. One chest all the way over here. Some mighty juice. I don't know how mighty it is. But it might be a big deal. Nah. Whatever. Anyway. Monster chest in here. You know, the classic... Uh, Classic formation of goons. They explode real good. And make you miserable. Damn it, stop exploding on a stealth. Uh, there's Gypsy Queen. Equipment for uh, ladies only. It's obviously not uh, quite up to par. It's getting there, but not not quite yet. Alright. Okay, 
Strong's weapon for Estelle. Four Duende Slippers. Basically, if you're looking for uh, ways to deck out Shara, this is the best place for it. Anyway, welcome to the roof. I forget to trigger something for the side quest, or what? No, okay. I found it. I found the crow I was looking for. I knew I had to run around here for a while until I found it. In any case, that's, uh... One engagement ring found. Thanks to the intrepid work of our heroic bracers. And now we can just make our escape. Luckily it's not too too hard to get out of here. We'll have to stop by this area a bit later because another monster pops up in this area, but until then, you know. Don't mind, don't mind. Luckily for us, there's no, uh, monsters on the, or, no fishing spots on the Malga Trail Mine, so, don't need to worry about that. But, before you leave this area, make sure to grab the singular treasure chest that's hiding just over here. Yeah, just over here. It's not even a good one, it's just a Tira Bomb. Mine seems to be doing all right. Non-miners not allowed. It's like the opposite of a bar. May have to head back into the fog to get out of here. Pop into the guild real quick here. Or sorry, wrong. Let's uh get let's get their ring back first before doing anything else. Let us in. Let us in. Um <clears throat> Every time I see your face, the emotions from that night come flooding back. Oh my god, guys. Focus. Looks like we found it. Lucky us. All it took was a slight little detour to the Tetracyclic Towers.
for no other love has received a stronger blessing. We still have a lifetime of well wishes ahead of us. Armand. Ellie. Aw, they're off in their own little world. You know what they say, love is blind. Anyway, let's, uh, let's leave. Yep. Alright, mission complete. Now we can go ahead and report what we've done so far to Ina. As we hunt for a few more fishing spots along the way. Yeah, so just the fishing spot search and the one monster on the Milch Main Road. Do, 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 do. All right. So the main road is to the to the west here. Grab the fishing spot up in the corner here. Do, 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 do. And enjoy the exciting gameplay of searching for the exact right bait to use. Got the Valeria base. Bass. Base, 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 base. Hey, this treasure chest has 100 water and wind sepith, which is pretty nice. And it looks like the uh, fog on the main road doesn't clear out that far. Just about 80 cells from the city. So, we can go ahead and report to Ina right now, but let's uh, scour the area for treasure chests first. There's a weapon for Agate in that one there. Tira Bomb over here. And I guess I gotta say having a map for these things is so much nicer, especially in the, these areas here. Yeah, there's the treasure chest, it's just hiding very well there. Some smelling salts there. And... I'm gonna head towards the checkpoint. Get the insulating tape there. Check out this trap chest here. Comet's a little stronger than uh, regular Comet. Not that we need to use it. Estelle takes care of business. Side there's the Scent Quartz, which is the opposite of Cloak Quartz. It uh, attracts monsters to your location. We don't want to. We don't want to deal with that. Last treasure chest in the area is a Zerum Powder. And then there's the Verte Bridge here. If I remembered correctly, there should be a fishing spot in the area. So before dealing with anything else, I'm going to take care of this.
just a basic rainbow trout with five of each. But that should mark four of them. So there should just be two more to go. One of them's in the Mistwald Forest, and I forget where the sixth is. Seems like nobody's told the rank and file very much about the Sky Bandits. Ashton's one of the few good army guys. He's like, yeah, this is a pretty serious situation. We need to work together. Do what we can. I mean, that's what this stuff is for. And here's our monster on the main road to take care of. Giant foot's mad, bro. Dang, he actually does some decent damage. All right. Well, obviously we can't let this stand. Problem solved. Good work, Tita. And there we go. Monster dealt with. Have to go back into the fog again. Uh, the sound of a bell for some reason. So by doing that quest, we're 61. So if we put this on a map, it's 60 cells down Elise, 80 down the Millage Main Road, 140 down the Malga Trail. You got something that looks roughly like that. Which is very confusing because fog doesn't do that. Typical fog, anyway.
<laughs> Maybe it is a flesh eating doom fog. <laughs> Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> the bell going off was our uh, big, big thing. In any case, I wonder what Mayor Klaus has to say. Mayor Klaus. Oh, his maid just collapsed. And apparently several other citizens have collapsed as well. That's not good. <laughs> Jeez, you just you can't find good help these days, I swear. So the symptoms are the same. They're pretty much just all asleep for some reason. This possibly couldn't be related to Ouroboros at all. <laughs> Their souls have been trapped! Oh no! So, we got some Nightfall exploring to do. We need to talk to all the victims of this, uh, well, we can't talk to the victims, but the, uh, families of the victims. And, uh, try to determine any common ground, anything interesting. <laughs> yeah, Olivia's like, yeah, obviously the society's behind this. So, we get a nice little flash to this. We got four people. The maid at the mayor's manor, Lita. Uh, Tabitha, the bar owner. The little kid, Luke. And the old man, Radford. So, four people. So, basically the game wants you to interview the four families. See what you can find out. You're going to want to make a save here, just in case, because you've got a new side quest pop up, and you have to do it immediately. In addition, just want to report that one quest there. 165 now. So, first thing you want to do, before talking to any victims whatsoever, Go to the Hotel Roland and get this uh, side quest started. If you'll remember from last time, this was the lady who was missing her cat. The first in the very first game, so now she's missing her cat again. <laughs> yeah, let's go find this cat.
<laughs> Apparently she might have gone to the landing port. It seems like a good idea. Alrighty then. So, we know immediately where to go to find it, but uh, let's stop by the clock tower before doing anything else. You want to sneak up on the pigeons here. You want to you want to sneak up on the the right pigeon here. Okay, whatever. Uh, point is, there's a pigeon named Bacon there, and if you're doing the side quest to find all the pigeons, that's the very last one you need to get. It's, uh, real, real dumb, and I hate it, and you should hate it too. Checking this out to upgrade what I can while I can. Um... All right. Anyway, side quests. Let's deal with side quests. Want to talk to Fabry here? Apparently hasn't seen a cat, but Skip's seen it, so let's go bug him. Wherever the Skip fellow is hiding. around here somewhere. I just forget where exactly he's hiding. There he is. He is hiding very well. This freaking fog, the humidity! Apparently, you saw the cat around noon. Might as well bug the uh, other members of the Cecilia. Maybe they've seen the cat. <laughs> Let's have the helmsman steer us true, then. Bitchy better. So... He's just at the bar. That's actually a lie. He's not at the bar. He's actually at the Oracle Factory. Hey. 
Apparently he's only seen this cat secondhand because of Zozimov, who's seen it. So, you know. Gotta... Gotta bug all the people. So... Now we go back to the landing port and find ourselves Zozimov, who is hiding right here, like a jerk. You know how many times it took me to try and find him the very first time I played this game? Oh, it pissed me off so much. But anyway, he's there. <laughs> he's uh, spending a relaxing evening in the woods. You know, this one tree. Yeah, of all the forests in Roland, this is clearly the best place to get some greenery. It's about a bit past noon today, while he was offloading luggage in the hold. Yep, the cat was inside the ship. <laughs> I suppose the ship could try to hold the cat another way. So, we just need to get inside the ship and then we'll uh we'll hopefully get a cat. Apparently the cat Zozimov saw was black. Uh-oh. Might as well check it out. <laughs> Let us take flight. No. We're going on to an airship. We will not be taking off, Olivier. So, talk to the uh, guy here again. Get inside the cat. Excuse us, we're bracers. We're on a job here, sir. Let's just brain him. Or we'll just have Sherazard press uh, against him. Oh dear. Now, why don't you think about it long and hard? <laughs> I can't let you in without permission. If all else fails, use your womanly charms. <laughs> Using your, your assets like a weapon like that is... So, something Oh, my envy is fathomless. Oh, Shara. <laughs> I should have brought Zen along for this too. Olivier and Zen. Oh man, this could get me fired. <laughs> All right. Let's go find this cat. Ara, Ara. <laughs> it's enough ghost talk, thanks. <laughs> All right, so we got testimony that the cat was in the hold. Let's check the hold. That sounds like a cat. Hey, it's Errol. Oh. She had kittens. 
They're so small. <laughs> uh. Yep. I guess this was a safe place to nest her cats. Nest her little babies. And now Ida has so many cats. <laughs> now comes the real challenge. I need to come up with the perfect name for each and every one of them. <laughs> and since we've helped her before, she gives us these master beads. Uh, she will also give those to you if you have max BP on your first playthrough. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on them. But, as you can see, the benefits of helping other people are uh, quite nice. Because the Master Beads are actually a fairly good accessory. Alright. That's that's our quest complete. Let's go ahead and stop in at the bar. Let's just bug Anton since he's here. <laughs> and it seems like uh, he's found a new love. He's uh, crushing on a beautiful blonde woman. After stopping at the Bracer Guild. Oh. Oh no. My poor, dear, sweet Anton. You crazy, insane fool. <laughs> uh. All right. Now we're now we're back to work. So let's go check at the mayor's residence here. The, our maiden question's on the second floor here, so let's talk to let's talk to Mayor Klaus's wife, Maylene. Mylene, whatever. So, she found her around 5 p.m. And apparently she just up and collapsed at the entryway. And since there were a ton of visitors, there's no way to know for sure who this could be. Unfamiliar visitors, any odd sounds, something something out of the ordinary. And apparently before she was knocked out, there was the faint sound of a bell. That's... Well, that's uh, an interesting piece of testimony. If uh, Ouroboros is sending messages, maybe this bell ringing is a message. So, that's one testimony out of the way. Our next destination is uh, back at the bar again. I probably should have just done this when I stopped there the first time. But, you know. Live and let live. Talk to Elisa here. Okay, so she also collapsed right around 5 o'clock. I'm just out cleaning stuff. Uh, 
Uh, Dad called her for a second, and then when she came back, she was unconscious. So yeah, that's uh, another case where we don't have any witnesses. And apparently just before this happened, she saw some strange lady come out of the clock tower. I can't lie, it was kind of hot. <laughs> okay, so maybe this uh, crazy hot lady is uh, responsible. We've still got two more victims to check in on though, so no rest for the wicked. Luckily for us, our next... Uh, our next point of port is one of these houses here. As you can see, Luke is out cold. And apparently Maggie just thinks, oh, it's their boys, They'll, they just wear themselves out playing. Or she's in total and utter denial and, you know, she's trying to cope. And since Pat was the first on the scene, you better give us some good testimony, kid, or we'll break your legs. Just like real cops do. He was on top of the clock tower, a little past 5 p.m. So again, same time as the other victims, approximately. And apparently Mr. Paddington uh, carried Luke down, which is a good idea because getting up that clock tower is difficult. And apparently, Pat didn't see anything stand out. So, we'll uh, leave them to their, uh, to their caretaking. Our last house is, uh, oops, I didn't want to leave the city. No, 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 I want to go here, approximately. I think it's this house here. Yeah, where Radford fell asleep. He fell asleep around 5.30, which is a bit later than the other victims. And apparently he collapsed just outside the door. He uh, announced that he was home, they opened the door for him, and he was passed out on the ground. Apparently, when they were putting him to bed, they heard the sound of the bell. So, the same as, uh, the same as Mylene did.
So, that's uh, all the testimony we're going to get. So let's uh, head back to Ina and uh, report on our findings. With something like this going on. We need to be certain that we've got everything under control. Once again, I will be making a new save here. Just in case I didn't get anything. Oops, I meant to talk to her. Yeah, you talk to Ina and it continues the quest, so... Say you're ready, when you think you're ready. And let's compare our notes. So, what's common between all the cases? Was it the time it happened? Well, it was close, but not quite. Was it the sound they heard? Again, close, but not quite. Uh, Elisa didn't hear a sound. And uh, Luke didn't hear a sound. Or, sorry, Pat didn't hear a sound. Uh, the correct answer is, there were no witnesses to the actual crime. Uh, everyone found them collapsed after the fact. Which means they were targeted when they were alone. And if Fog's acting up like this, it's hard to see your mystery assailant. So, we've got some testimony on the, uh... Yep, yeah, the sound of a bell, a woman robed in black. These seem are, uh... They seem like they might be related. And since, uh, this lady was seen near the clock tower, that's the same place where Luke collapsed. It's highly likely that this uh, mystery woman is our assailant. And an enforcer, in fact. So, considering the situation, we're pretty much going to have to spend the night patrolling. Looks like the guys are out patrolling. <laughs> and, you know, they're, they're not doing it to be chivalrous, they're just, you know, they know that Estelle and Sherizard have been on the scene all day, so... Let the guys do the work while the ladies rest. Olivier Lenheim is a perfect gentleman who would never overstep his bounds. Oh, we'll be protected, all right. Once I tie you to a mattress and throw you into the river, that is. <laughs> hey, idiot, what the hell are you doing out here? Oh, Agate, the muse of comedy touches you. Did you not say that you and Zinn would handle the patrol? Uh, no. I said leave it to us guys. Last I checked, that includes you. But I could be wrong. Um, come on, get inside. Agate, wait a moment. Do you not realize that a gathering such as this is no common occurrence? 
I'll enjoy it enough for the both of us. Just let me go. Yeah, you get inside. Come on. Uh, well, that's probably the best way to domesticate Olivier, on the whole. How the heck can he not show any, like, tension or anything in her predicament, though? I'm pretty sure he was 100% serious. <laughs> He's definitely a bad influence on Tita. Anyway, we just fast travel to the Bright family home. And, aw, Tita's snuggling with Estelle. But, uh... Come back soon, Estelle. No, so cute. So cute. <laughs> Well, we heard a strange sound. That's not good. Let's check it out. Make sure everything's uh, hunky-dory. Looks like Chloe's fast asleep. <laughs> Seems like she's having uh, some tough dreams. Better let her sleep well. Fog's still really intense here. But it seems like the second floor is fine. Let's uh, let's go downstairs and check out the first floor. Yeah, it doesn't look like Shara's in uh, in bed. That door is locked, at least. Ah, she's uh. Having a nice glass of wine with their uh, tarot cards. <laughs> yep, now she's acting like a proper bracer. Inverted Emperor. <laughs> no, she was drawing that card for her. <laughs> yeah. You have all my minutes. That's what older sisters are for. Yeah, how dare he get caught on film? I mean, it's Dorothy taking the pictures. <laughs> yeah, the camera of miracles. Clearly not the Grandmaster, guys. And since we're confident Joshua presents no danger to the citizens of Liberal, we're just going to let this slide.
And yeah, once I get this far in, the headache sets in. <laughs> yeah, she's really, she's really struggling with it, but I think she'll come to an answer in time. Estelle was able to sort her feelings out thanks to the power of talking to your friends. <laughs> oh, Sherry, don't tease Estelle like that. Ooh, you think not? She is a very strong-willed boyish sort of girl. Yeah, beneath that, there's sort of a deeply buried sense of refinement to her. That sounds like just the kind of girl Joshua would snuggle tenderly with. <laughs> Sherry, did you become a perverted old man while I wasn't looking or something? The fog seeped into your brain, didn't it? As they overcome perils together, the soil will become fertile with affection. Oh, but Estelle, why are you worried? If someone steals Joshua from you, all you have to do is take back your man. Bright versus Capua, a struggle to the death. Note to self, never talk to Sherry about anything in the future. At all. Ever. <laughs> Oh, believe me, I'm plenty worried on that front, too. <laughs> yeah, still, you got a lot of competition. Well, except you don't. Joshua is pretty much single-mindedly focused on you, so... <laughs> I gotta bother some little sister to handle all the crazy in my life. <laughs> and that was a nice little nice little bonding moment there. I really love this series for moments like this. The Inverted Emperor. It's funny how you can have two different conversations like that. With the chiming of that bell. It's another day in Roland. The fog is even worse now. And so we've got control back again. But, uh, I'm gonna make a save here, and call an episode. It's been about two and a half hours, so I think it's a, it's a good time to call it. Um, yeah, we'll be able to probably finish off the chapter tomorrow, or when I stream next. Could be tonight. Whatever. Uh, point is I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, yeah, so that's the end of the episode for today. I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Uh, if you want to support me on YouTube, Twitch, whatever, like, comment, subscribe, do those things. I've got a Patreon as well if you're interested in that. Go check that out. And I also have a straw poll going uh, on Twitch page at least. Uh, click on Emma and she'll take you right to where you need to go. So if you want to vote in that, and uh, check that out. Go right ahead and do so. In any case... This has been Logic Blade. I hope you all have a good night, and we'll see you next time for episode 20. Holy moly, I'm on 20 episodes already. <laughs> see you then.